Hey everybody, I'm Dan Merle here with my review of Longshot on Fandom Entertainment. Longshot is opening in theaters today, which means you don't even have to wait. You can go see it right after this review if you decide that it's something you want to check out. Longshot's directed by Jonathan Levine, who you know may know from Seth Rogen projects like 5050 and The Night Before. He also directed Warm Bodies and an episode of the Screen Junkie show bizarrely one of the first things that i worked on when i came to work uh, for this channel so pretty crazy stuff there it's a screenplay from dan sterling and liz Hanna, and it stars charlie theron as charlotte field the united states secretary of state who also has presidential aspirations she reconnects with fred flarsky played by seth rogan and what a seth rogan character name Fred Flarsky. That seems perfect. He is an unemployed journalist who is recruited to punch up Charlotte's uh, humor factor, her, her Q ratings, to get her into the prime position for a presidential run. Of course, as they reconnect, their bond also strengthens. Sparks fly. It's been labeled as a rom-com, but I would say this is really more of a comedy first with romantic elements. I think rom-com invokes certain unfortunately in a lot in a lot of cases a lot of cliches that this movie doesn't have i would label long shot as much more of a straight comedy that has romantic elements and it's one that i really really enjoyed a lot uh, the supporting cast includes bob odenkirk as the president of the united states and a supporting member playing a rupert murdoch type who you may know about but I didn't know about going in and one of the fun things about this movie was figuring out who that person was so I won't spoil it but they are great in the role and it is a Tropic Thunder like presence for them in this movie. Now, long shot is a political comedy, which are two words that, uh, even more so than usual, might put a little bit, a few people on edge. But what I liked about it is, it is really, really funny. It's set in the political world, but it doesn't overly rely on jokes about politics. And in the kind of culture that we live in today, where so much of what we're seeing and surrounded seems to be infused with politics, including comedy, I thought this was refreshing. Now, that's not to say that it is completely uh, with a tone deaf or with a tin ear to what's going on in the real world. It's very much a satire of the political world in which we live. Bob Odenkirk plays the president who was a former TV star, which a lot of people say like, oh, that's an easy joke. But what I liked about the movie was it isn't just a bunch of veiled Trump jokes. It isn't just a bunch of veiled jokes about what is actually happening. It's more of a commentary on the overall environment, the overall politics of what's going on today including what I thought to be some really great interactions between Seth Rogen and O'Shea Jackson, who plays his best friend, that address the way that we address our differences, the way that we see people who disagree with us, how learning something about the people that we know, even though nothing changes about the relationship that you've had in the past, for some reason can change the context with how you interact with them. I was really actually caught by surprise with how deftly the political elements of the the movie were handled. It's not driven by that. As a matter of fact, I would say 90% of the laughs in the film are completely divorced from the fact that it is about politics, other than the fact that that's the setting of the movie. That's, that's how everything is set up. But I will say that if you're worried about not going to see it because you don't want to be exposed to more political jokes, I think it is a much broader commentary on the overall atmosphere, particularly in the United States that we're in today. And it wasn't one that sort of set me on my back by taking a side or repeating the same easy jokes that you've seen in a lot of late night shows and movies and television shows already. I thought it was actually a much smarter look at just the overall culture and where we are today. The comedy comes first and long shot and luckily the comedy is what works i laughed a lot in this movie and there's all kinds of comedy in the movie i think it works on so many different levels it works as i mentioned on this the broad political level it works on a great relationship level the interaction between seth rogan and charlie's theron is great they have a really good chemistry now this is not a pair that you might think about putting together in a comedy and particularly a comedy with romantic elements but they really make it work charlie's theron we know is a fantastic actress she is an oscar-winning actress 
But I think that Seth Rogen is also really coming into his own, not just as a comedic actor, but as just a flat out actor in any kind of genre. And we've seen him in other movies uh, like the Steve Jobs film where he had a straight dramatic role and I thought he was great in that part. But this is a great hybrid of the dramatic work that we've seen Seth Rogen do and sort of a bridge to a lot of the other kinds of films that we've Seth seen Seth Rogen do over the past decade plus. I kind of got like a Richard Dreyfuss type vibe uh, from Rogan in this film. And I really think it opens the doors for him to explore a lot of other areas if he chooses to do so that are not just connected to what he's done before. Because I really love Pineapple Express. Uh, I love movies that he's written like super bad. I love, you know, I even enjoyed The Night Before, which I wouldn't put up on the level of the greatest Seth Rogen movies that I've seen, but I enjoyed it. But they all have sort of a, a, a connection to each other in the sense that they're they're kind of about arrested development in a sense. They are uh, large, often uh, drug-fueled with drug-fueled themes and stuff, and there's a little bit of that in this movie. That's why I say it's kind of a bridge. You can see the origins of a a lot of Seth Rogen's work, but I really do think that this is a great vehicle for him by, by teaming him up with an actor like Charlize Theron, who brings such grace and poise and dignity to the role, and you kind of see each of them drawing out the parts in the other that you might not have seen in other films. I think that the movie allows Seth Rogen to flex a lot more of the dramatic muscle in a comedy that he may not have had a chance to do so before, and it allows Charlize Theron to show a much more vulnerable side and a much funnier side than we've seen before. And inside all of that, it doesn't shy away from the fact that Charlize Theron is playing a woman in power, and it addresses that head on, but again, not in a way that seems like it's explaining to you that it's an oversimplification. It's not the main point of the movie, like a much simpler uh, script might have been. It is an important element, but not the driving element. It's the commentary in this movie that merges so well with the comedy, with the character work, and I love the character work in this movie, that makes this such a well-rounded film. The acting is solid, the comedy is solid, I laughed a lot. There's one aside, there's one episode, if you will, in the film that really kind of directly ties more to Seth Rogen's drug comedy past that while I thought it was funny, maybe wasn't necessarily a great fit in the overall scheme of the movie, but it wasn't really also anything to derail the film for me. I thought that it really had a lot of great things to say about so many issues and also was able to be a great comedy including one of the better body humor gags if i'm being honest i didn't know that you could show it in a movie and you'll know if you see it you'll know it when you see it but it leads to some of the biggest laughs in the film because they're able to use it as an ongoing thing without exploiting it without going too far but using it as another element in heightening the comedy of the situation so if you've seen Avengers Endgame three or four or five times already, or even if you haven't and you're just looking for a really solid comedy, albeit a rated R one and it is a hard R one, it is definitely not for kids, I can't recommend Long Shot enough. It is funny, it is relevant, it is touching, and it is all of these things in equal measure, which means it's a really solid script, a really solid execution from its director, its stars, its cast, all the way down the line. So, big recommendation for Longshot. Check it out in theaters right now, and check us out here on Fandom Entertainment. We'll be back with reviews of all the big movies as we get into the summer movie season, and everything else we see that we think you might wanna check out. Be sure to stay tuned. Until next time, I'm Dan Merle. Thanks for watching.